Now, let's um, start adding our speed limits. So if I know, um, if I hope that Carlton does, or the computer lab has uh, Google Earth, doesn't look like it. Okay, let's um, put this down a little bit and try to find the roadway speeds through maps. My country is Boulevard and Sourcey. Okay, there you go. So this is my area, I want to find out the speed limit. So I'll just put the little uh, green or aerial view guy um, and just walk over the road, try to find out what the speed limit is. Country Hills Boulevard has a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. And you can do the same thing on Sourcey Trail. And I know that Sourcey Trail has a 70 uh, kilometer per hour uh, speed limit. So uh, I'll go back to Visa and Make sure, again, your, your work is in network objects. Make sure you have design speed decisions selected. Just left click it so it becomes active. Now, when you come in, control, right click, at the beginning of your link. Um, uh, once you do that, hold control and right click, you'll get a dialog box. Um, and it will be empty. Previous versions of VSM did have cars and HGVs, I believe, filled in by automatically. But anyways, right click and add a dialog box. You get a car, let's say, or the speed limit for cars and HGVs and buses are almost the same. Most of the time, buses travel 10 km per hour below the speed limit of cars. Um, so I'll put 60. And uh, by the way, you can select both of them. If you hold control, left click, change it to 60, it changes it for both of them at the same time. For my sake, I'll have buses at 50, because typically they are slower than general traffic. Now, one nice thing about the latest versions of VSAM, you can um, copy elements on, on your links. So if you hold control, left click and drag, you'll get a plus sign. When you get that plus sign, left click and drag, you have copied that speed limit. So any car that enters your network, once it, the front bumper of the car touches that desired speed decision, their desired speed will become 60 km per hour. If that vehicle is a bus, it will become 50. You can control this heavily if you go to base data, because this is really a distribution. This speed limit is not a fixed value. Not every car will travel at 60 km per hour. Um, cars will travel on average with a 60 km per hour speed limit, but that's a defined distribution. Actually, if you go to base data, go to distributions, and go to desired speed, these are the speed definitions or the speed uh, distributions that are used in these uh, desired speed decision um, uh, little uh, indications. So a speed of 60 that we designed on, decided on here is reflected in this distribution. And this distribution is, in reality, vehicles traveling between 58 kilometers per hour to 68 kilometers per hour. The distribution is randomly assigned. That's because, you know, vehicles typically drive a little bit above the speed limit most of the time. So we capture that through a distribution. The buses distribution will mean that buses will travel between 48 to 58. As part of calibration, some cities or jurisdictions may have their own spot speed studies at different speed limits. Uh, because if I'm not sure if you have taken a previous transportation courses or not, typically speed limits are assigned based on the 85th percentile um, speed limit, which means 85% of your driving population on that specific roadway would be dra driving around that speed limit. This is one of the ways we def define or decide on speed limits. So um, you can really create your own. You can add your own distribution by adding the add box and create your own distribution. You can add the distribution uh, table here if you have the table. I believe Edmonton does have its own. Um, as they use it for pass it by for consultants who are working on um, recent projects or simulation projects. Uh, I don't believe Ottawa or other cities have, uh, but sometimes uh, the municipality may provide you with custom information for your project. 
So that's really it in terms of setting uh, desired speed decisions. Desired speed decisions, it's very important to know desired speed decisions are permanent speed uh, markers. What that means is once a vehicle hits that point, they will keep driving at that specific desired speed until they are told otherwise. This is very important because at turns, you want to introduce some temporary speed reductions. And then once those temporary speed reductions are completed and vehicles pass through them, the vehicles can go back to the desired speed decision. How we do that is through reduced speed areas. Make sure it's left click it, make sure it's active. Let's say uh, I like at turns, left turns for example, typically vehicles, if it's a 90 degree turn, um, the typical um, speed is around 25 km per hour. This is a much um, wider uh, curve and it's, it's very generous, so I'll increase that to 30. How to draw reduced speed areas is really through control, hold control, right click, similar to how you draw any, any object, similar to how you draw links really, and draw a box in the area you want vehicles, your vehicles to reduce their speeds. So I'll draw one here. I'll add, add again, add again, so I get all vehicles. And I'll change for cars and HGVs. Well, in fact, HGVs uh, or heavy buses or trucks, they cannot turn at the same speed of cars. So you need to assign actually, they will actually turn almost at the same speed of a bus. So with cars, I'll choose 30. And with those two guys, I'll lower it by five kilometers per hour, 25. Now, once you're done, I don't want to like um, draw it again. You can do the same exact thing, control, lift, click, drag. You have copied it to the other lane. Um, let's say my other, my really other left turns are really wide and are really generous. So I'm going to assign the same parameters. So you can, again, left click, um, hold, control, and get to the right lane or link and then lane. I'll do that here. You can do this here too. You can copy two if you want at the same time. It's really up to you. And you have joined it for all of your um, left turns. Typically for a 90 degree right turn, if you want to do the same thing, let's say if I'm turning from here to here, typically my speed will be 12 or 15 kilometers per hour when I'm doing the turn. But I'm doing the turn actually through a channel that is very, very generous. Uh, I've driven this myself and I can do a 45 and even a 50 if I want to. But for now, I'm just going to change this to 45. Control, hold, right click and drag. Again, add, add, add. For cars, 40 km per hour and those guys will get 35 or the one lower 30. If you don't have a 35, you can create your own 35 through the data. Again, uh, go to uh, distributions, that's the distributions, and you can set up your own distribution if you want or wish. But for now, I'm going to use what the software has to offer. And typically, the defaults are used for uh, most settings. And in fact, I don't see you guys using high speed turns in your projects because you're in heavily dense. Um, urban settings. This is the outskirts of Calgary, so expecting uh, bigger intersections, higher right of way, and so on and so forth, or bigger right of way. Uh, this looks similar, so if it doesn't look similar and you want to just reduce the pain of drawing elements, you can copy and then edit. Just uh, I click the link by mistake, uh, click, and you can really edit it yourself. I know this um, uh, probably this one is a five kilometer below it, so I'll just copy it because it's a little bit tighter. Uh, some cities, by the way, have their own guidelines. If you pick up on Toronto's um, TIS guidelines, they have some direction on setting speeds. Uh, same thing goes for Edmonton guidelines, but I don't think other a lot of other cities do that. Uh, but again, uh, it's really up to how the intersection is, it looks like. Your experience even driving and your familiarity with the network helps quite a bit. I've driven this intersection quite a bit, and I know uh, the uh, uh, speeds, it operates with, with the turns almost from every direction because of my experience. You can. This is actually why it's really good for 
a transportation model or someone who's doing a traffic study to be familiar with the context of their area where, where they work. And uh, in this case, I'll actually lower the speed here to 30 and for the other guys to 25. I did not press uh, control. Okay. I'll copy the same exact thing, but lower the speeds this time. But this is too long, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to shorten it a little bit. And the desired speed or reduced speed areas, you draw them and the areas where it's tightest. The reason is uh, vehicles will try at like vehicles approaching this link will try to be at a speed of 30 once the vehicle comes just right in front of the reduced uh, speed area. The, this is actually the exact opposite of desired speed decisions because vehicles have first to reach to the desired speed decision before they decide to change their speed. Again, at reduced speed areas, vehicles will decelerate to reach the speed at the beginning of the um, reduced speed area. Is this clear? So I'm going here. Uh, I'll actually lower this significantly to uh, 25 for typical cars because it's a much tighter turn and 20 for regular other traffic, uh, heavier traffic. So that really does it uh, for uh, vehicles. Most of the time, we do not set desired speed decisions. Most of the time, as the speed of a pedestrian is about uh, more or less, give or take, three to five kilometers per hour. So we can use the some default speeds, but the, the trick is, or, or sometimes well, the jurisdiction can provide you with their speeds too. Like in Ottawa TIA guidelines, you are provided with the uh, design of the walk speed that's used for designing signal um, uh, or signal timing. So you can use that uh, by uh, defining your own design speed distribution. Um, so we don't do that for pedestrians because we can control it through the input itself. Through the vehicle input, we can tell every type of pedestrian can enter at five kilometer per hour. So I don't have to worry about coding them uh, differently, so on and so forth. But um, anyways, um, any questions so far?